environmentally friendly, sustainable living and shopping. Well, to start with, we are the CPOs of the home, the chief purchasing officers of the home. And you, maybe some of you are familiar with this number. We, by and large, are the locomotives in the green marketplace today. We are making 80 to 85 percent of all retail consumer purchases, and that means a lot of those things in the green, what, what, what marketers call the green space. You know, it's not just cheese doodles and diapers either. Uh, look at that number for consumer electronics. Look at that number for new vehicle sales. We are increasingly buying products that used to be considered traditionally male dominated. We are really buying, look at our stock market investments. We are really starting to dominate the market in all kinds of non-traditional places. I saw one number that suggests that women are spending more money at Home Depot. And my, mom, my husband said, no, that's not true. And I said, well, what do you do when you go there? He said, well, I call you. <laughs> and I said, and if you don't, why don't you? And he says, well, you did give me the list. We are involved in all of those purchases. And it's not just at home. We're the chief purchasing officers at work, too. Look at the way we are starting to dominate the positions that are responsible for the buying purchases that companies make, fleet vehicles, carpeting, supplies, all of those things. Human Resource Administration Department has provided a health plan. Women are really powerful in the marketplace. And ultimately, we're the biggest spenders by far. You know, anybody who still thinks that women are a niche, take a look at this chart. We're outspending men in the 18 to 34 category by nine times. So from now on, for the rest of this presentation, when I talk about consumers, I'm talking about women. And if I'm not talking about women, if I'm talking about those other niches, I'll let you know. One thing that's really interesting about women is that as we age, we spend more money and we become more passionate about the environment. And again, there is just this this embrace of sort of the youth culture, and I remember, you know, I, I was a youth once, I was a teenager once, I understand that, but from a marketing point of view, it's a mistake to ignore the incredible potential that women who are 35, 40, 45, 50 have. Marty Barletta at a, at a research marketing firm called Trendsite calls primetime women the most powerful force. I mean, look at, they're a small percentage of the population, and they're a huge percentage of the consumer buying power. And why is that? Because women become more stable financially as they get older. Women still outlive men, and what are they doing? They're inheriting this income as their husbands and partners die. They're a huge and powerful force in the marketplace. But we're not only consumers. We're also what I call concerned caretakers. How many people in the audience are mothers? How many people have or had a mother? <laughs> That's where it starts, right? It starts with the mother's body. And think about, and, and really that's why I think women are particularly intuitive about the link between protecting the environment and protecting ourselves. How do women talk about things? Well, we've got a guy up here and a woman. How many words in a day does a man say? All right, those people who said two, that was mean. <laughs> All right, how many words would a woman say? A million. Well, 20. All right, now that was mean. <laughs> but can I just point out, these are just the things we're actually saying out loud. It, it's not what we're thinking. Okay, it's not what we're email, it's not what we're blogging. We really say a lot. And what are we saying? We're talking about great grand experiences that we have, what we feel strongly about, and we're telling you what we think, even when you haven't asked us, right? In fact, as a woman, I expect that. I expect if I'm having a conversation with another woman, at some point, she's going to tell me what she likes. If you take a quick look at the blogosphere, what are men blogging about? They're doing product reviews, they're doing news reports. Thank you for that, because when we use that so that we can give each other advice. 
So we've got these obstacles, cost quality confusion, and a lack of products, this guiltiness. Manufacturers are fueling it with this credibility gap and giving us these things like compostable water bottles that are supposed to save the planet, but that are, what do we do about it? Think about what you're doing at your own company. Women want to know that. They want to know what you're doing before you ask them to do the same thing. And tell it like it is at the point of purchase, online, and in your ads. I talk about the green math when I talk to women. There are higher costs for a lot of things, you know, no question about it. And women, you know, remember, a lot of women are mothers. What are they saying to kids? What do they say to kids? Take your medicine. Right? We can take the medicine, but we need to know why it's worth it. Uh, do we have time for any questions? Yes. Can you name a few brands you think are doing a good job of speaking for Well, funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a planted question. Best Buy, they're not, they're not really what I would consider an environmental brand, but what they realized is there are more men who go into Best Buy basically. And what do they do? They browse. That's entertainment for a lot of guys. Oh, hey, I want a night out, let's go to Best Buy and look at the new plasma screen. So it's like great fun. What do women do when they go in there? They shop. So they train, They are, because we don't have time to look at plasma screen. That's not our idea of fun. But if we want to buy one for our husbands, we're going to do the research, we're going to go in, we're going to buy it, and then we're moving on. So they did a lot of research on how to talk to women, and they actually have made a concerted effort to hire more female employees and to train people, to train their, their male employees in particular in how to have a conversation with women on the floor. And look at the reaction. In these stores where they're doing this, their sales are going are skyrocketing. Uh, just a couple. I love Von Yemi. I mean, know there are other cleanser products here. Why do I love this product? It is cheap. It cleans everything except glass. It doesn't scratch. It has no fragrance, no perfume, no dye, no, no chlorine. It's a friendly little container, and it's one container. I don't have to put a million things underneath my cover. All I need is bottom honey. Stonyfield Farm. This is a $350 million company today. How much money have they spent on advertising? Zero. None. Word of mouth has built this company based on the quality of the product. It's, it verifies its claims, builds community. It's a terrific company. How do you find that women want to be engaged on these issues online? You mentioned the patients are now going through the proliferation of social networks where they're now literacy on these issues. You know, uh, women really are looking to blogs for advice. You know, women go, I mean, there, there's a big group of women who go for entertainment, there's no question about it. Um, but when women are going to a lot of blogs, they're looking for advice. And if you look at the kinds of blogs that are proliferating, I'm always amazed, these huge uh, reviews of the 10 different kinds of bottles that are available out there for water, or the five different kinds of clothing options there are. So by and large, I think women are looking for advice. And you know, they're, they're talking back and forth, lots of comments on websites. It's another opportunity for conversation. Thank you so much.